Today we're going to talk about thermometers and we're going to talk about the different types of thermometers. For instance, we have thermocouples, which are two wires. We have resistance thermometers like thermistors and resistance wires. We're going to talk about some terminology that comes with thermometers like calibration, linearity, sensitivity, robustness, etc. And lastly, we're going to compare different types as well. To start, Let's have the definition of a thermometer. A thermometer is any device which can be used to measure temperature. And this is pretty straightforward. Thermometers make use of a certain physical property to measure the temperature. The physical property changes with temperature. So this is basically how thermometers tend to work. We have to have a physical and very observable and measurable property that will change with the temperature, that has a relation to temperature. Now, as an example, we can look at this, the volume of a fixed mass of gas at a constant temperature. Now, if you watched my previous video on the gas laws, then you would know that if you tend to heat a certain gas, then the volume of the gas tends to also increase because the volume will expand. And that's because the molecules get heated up and they started moving far away from each other. So... Basically, the volume of gas expanding is just something very easy to observe. You see it all the time, a balloon that becomes hotter and bigger as you put it under the sun, for example. Or a plastic bottle that had some, some air in it that pops out as you take it out from a refrigerator. So this is a very obvious property of gas, which is volume, and this has a relation to the temperature, which is why we use it sometimes as a thermometer as well. We have other examples, for example, the resistance of an electrical resistor or a thermistor. And we know that sometimes the metals um, gain a higher resistance as you go on to higher temperatures. And you can measure this using ammeters and voltmeters. You can get the current and the voltage running through the wires in order to calculate the resistance. And then you can use that to predict what sort of temperature the wires are at. The voltage produced by a thermocouple, we're going to talk about this later. The color of an electrically heated wire, so some wires, they tend to have different colors as you heat them up to higher temperatures. And you can also use that as an indicator of what temperature it is. Something very important when it comes to thermometers is that the terminology has to be very well understood. And so we're going to talk about that right now. So let's first of all start with calibration. Now, calibration is like adding a scale to a certain thermometer. We just previously talked about how thermometers use physical properties to measure temperature. But these physical properties don't necessarily have a scale on them. They don't have numbers associated with them. For example, the color of a heated wire. If the color is red, we don't really know that color red means 30 or something like that. So we have to associate each color or each shade with a certain number, and that number will be a temperature. So adding a scale to a physical property to make it readable is called calibration. Then we have the range. The difference between the maximum and minimum temperature that a thermometer can measure is called the range. This is pretty straightforward. It's just maximum minus minimum. For example, if you have a higher range or a wide range, that means you can measure temperatures that are very low all the way up to very high temperatures. If you have a narrow range, it means that you can only measure a couple of temperatures, so you can't really get far and measure drastically different ones. The scales are divided into equal divisions. This is pretty easy. One, Celsius, uh, one degree Celsius in the Celsius scale is one division. Between the zero degrees Celsius and the 100 degrees Celsius, there are 100 divisions for the Celsius scale. Linearity is the extent to which equal rises in temperature give equal changes in, in the thermometer's output. So what this means is basically that, for example, when a, the temperature rises, for example, by two degrees Celsius, then the volume of gas should also maybe become a little bit higher maybe by two centimeter cube. And then when it's four degrees Celsius, then it also has to be an equal rise, maybe four. Cube. So it's not always like this. Sometimes, and there are differences to this, 
Maybe you will have the voltage of a certain device called a ther thermocouple that increases as you increase the temperature. And then let's say the voltage is, so this is the temperature and this is the voltage. Let's say, for example, it increases like this. It means at lower temperatures, it doesn't increase by that much. But when the temperatures become higher, it increases by a lot. The voltage will increase by a lot. This is not linear because for each change of temperatures, you're not getting an equal change in output. It's becoming different. And so this is what we mean by linearity. For it to be linear, we would prefer the line to be straight so that it gives equal rises each time. If you give equal rises, it's really, really easy to measure and figure out the thermometer and the temperature scale as well. Then we have sensitivity. So sensitivity is how big a change in output is produced by a given change in temperature. So if there's a very, very small change in temperature, however, the change in output, for example, maybe the color change of a certain wire is huge, then that means that we can also detect very, very small little differences. And that's why it's called sensitivity. Very, very self-explanatory. Then we have robustness. So robustness is the ability of a system to resist change without adapting its initial stable configuration. It just basically means that it will remain steady. It doesn't really get ruined by using it too much, etc. Now we're going to talk about the different types of electrical thermometers. So we, we talked about, you know, for example, liquid and glass thermometers. And now we're going to talk about electrical thermometers that require a circuit to operate them. Voltmeters, ammeters, etc. So there are two types. First is resistance thermometers. This consists of resistor metal, which is basically the higher you heat a metal, the higher the resistance of the metal will be. Or thermistors, which are, you know, they give a bigger change in temperature. We also have the thermocoupled thermometers, which we're going to talk about. But first, let's get the resistance thermometers out of the way. So resistance thermometers are electrical resistance um, for metals or for thermistors, and they will change with the temperature. For a metal, they change more gradually over a wider range. For a thermistor, a small change in temperature results in a large change in resistance. It is therefore sensitive over a narrow range. So. Thermistors don't tend to measure that many temperatures, but they have very accurate and sensitive readings. And for metals, they're not as sensitive, but they have a very stable and wide range that you can measure. Now let's talk about thermocouples. So thermocouples basically look like this. You can see that I've tried to put two different colors of wires. They're supposed to represent two different metal types of the wires. And here we see the, the typical voltmeter symbol. So wires of two different metals, X and Y, this is metal X, this is metal Y, they're soldered to each other at each end. Soldered is like, you kind of like melt the metal and then you put them together and that's how you join them together. And so hence there are two junctions. These are what we call the junctions, the parts where they're soldered to each other. Now, if the junctions are at different temperatures, an electromotive force will be induced. So, which means that if, for example, you know, this is slightly hotter and this is slightly colder, then there's going to be an electromotive force. There go there's going to be an electric field, essentially, that kind of makes the electrons travel. So, what we're seeing here is that there is an electric field or kind of a voltage setup, a potential difference because you can't have a potential field, potential energy field without having potential differences. So that's how thermocouples work. To extrapolate on the thermocouples, the voltage depends on the temperature and the metal that is chosen. And this is why the thermometers need to be calibrated. Why is that so? Because if you decided to plot the temperature versus the voltage together, you see that this is not a straight line. It's not linear. So it's not linear. Thermocouples are not linear. And that's why it needs to be calibrated. So this is a pretty important point. You'll see something like this. At lower temperatures, it tends to have like lower changes in the voltage and then at higher temperatures it suddenly becomes like really high changes in voltage so that's kind of the relationship this graph might be 
pretty helpful to memorize because the voltage temperature relationship is non-linear. So that is about it for this. And the bigger the temperature, obviously, the bigger the voltage that will be induced for the thermocouple. We're going to now compare the resistance thermometers and the thermocouple thermometers. So let's talk about robustness. And remember that robustness is how stable it remains, how much it doesn't change over a period of time when you use it. Resistance thermometers, the thermistors and the metal resistance wires, they're very robust. They really don't change a lot. Thermocouple thermometers, um, they are robust, but not as much as resistance thermometers. And then we have the range. So thermistors, as we talked about, they have a narrower range. Resistance wires have a wider range. And the thermocouple thermometers can be very wide. And why we use this can be is because therm thermocouple thermometers, you can make them out of different wires. So for certain selections of wires, they can be very wide. The size. So the resistance thermometers, they are actually larger than the thermocouples and they have a greater thermal capacity, which means that they are slower acting. To understand what thermal capacity is, thermal capacity is basically how much heat you need to add for something to become hotter. And you can check out my video on this. But this is why it's slower acting. And because it's larger than the thermocouple, it means that it has more metal. So that's why it's more slower to kind of react and to heat up so that it measures a temperature. However, thermocouple thermometers are smaller. They have less metal, and that's why they have a smaller thermal capacity and get heated faster. So they're quicker acting. They're, they can act rapidly, and they can measure temperatures at a point. So what's important is that thermocouple thermometers can um, maybe measure rapidly changing temperatures, while with resistance thermometers, you're going to need more time for something to heat up. So if you have a rapidly changing temperature, Resistance thermometers might not be your choice. Then we have sensitivity. Resistance thermometers, the thermistor tends to have a very high sensitivity as we talk about. Resistance wire, as we talked about, less sensitive but stable over a wide range. For thermocouples, they can be very sensitive if you use certain metals, right? And then linearity, which is, you know, to the extent where you have the same change in outputs as the same change in input. So the thermistor, it is a fairly linear one over that range. And then for resistance wires, they have a very good linearity. As you said, stable over a wide range. Thermocouple thermometers, they are nonlinear. And we can see that from the previous graph that we looked at, which plotted voltage against temperature, and then it just went like that. It's nonlinear. It's curved. This requires calibration. You need to add a linear scale towards this nonlinear voltage output. Lastly, remote operation. So can you use it even though you're far away from the temperature at the thermometer? And for both of them, the answer is the same. Long conducting wires allow the operator to be at a distance from the thermometer. So that would conclude our comparison of the thermometers and the different qualities of the thermometers as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this intro to thermometers. If you enjoyed, I have more videos on thermal physics that you can check out, as well as some other th physics videos on a similar level that could also be helpful. Thank you so much for watching.